Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys, we have a new update, and the mod pack has actually been released to public. Mm hmm. So you can go and download the newest version of Project Ozone 3 and play in Kappa Mode as well, which is super awesome. So, what I'm doing right now is we are hanging out here in the Twilight Forest. We need to continue on with our armor quests. And the next one was the Yeti armor. And this requires us to have a bunch of alpha Yeti fur. Uh, you get, I don't know, seven, maybe 15 alpha Yeti fur per boss kill. I saw there was an alpha Yeti spawn egg. So I'm thinking what I wanna do is go and spawn in the alpha Yeti, use these mob swabs on it, and get a bunch of DNA samples, and then just trade those to chickens, just get a few of these, and we can just spawn in the exact amount that we need. I don't really feel like it's worth making an entire spawner out of this guy, because I don't think we need like a bunch of Alpha Yeti fur beyond what we're doing here. So anyway, uh, that is the, uh, the current game plan, is to just go in and get the one, although I think I might have been here before. Oh no, that's a spawner right there in the center, right? Okay. Yeah, go ahead and get rid of all of these regular Yetis. We don't need these guys around. Get out of here. Okay, so we just, all right, dear. <laughs> yeah, we just want to get the uh, the big boy spawned in. Dude, these guys are coming from everywhere. I'm not even sure how damaging they are. Uh, but anyway, let, can I let one hit me? Oh, he picked me up. Get off me. Okay, so I guess they're not that damaging. They just pick you up a little bit. <laughs> uh, so let's spawn in the big boy. Whoa. Oh, that's right. These guys, they just pick you up and toss you. For some reason, I was thinking they'd do something else a little bit more damaging. Okay, so I mob swab this guy. Uh, yeah, okay, so you can do that. I wasn't actually sure if that was a thing that we could do, but definitely looks like it. I'm trying to, oh, he's got me. <laughs> trying to mob swab this guy. I guess I need to take my bow off my offhand. Probably take that off and do this and this. Oh, I'm being swarmed. Oh, okay, okay. Let's get back over here to this guy. Swab him, swab him. Oh, that's actually pretty easy. If he picks you up, you can just like swab him a bunch of times. I'll just stand out here so I can adjust my inventory a bit. All right, it should be good. Not you, not get off me, guy. <laughs> All right, got you, got you again. I think that's probably enough. Let's just go ahead and take him out. Oh, he's angry. Definitely angry. I can't get close to him when he's doing this mode. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I need to make sure my inventory is properly adjusted here. Oh, these guys, they're relentless. <laughs> okay. Let's get rid of some of this Yeti stuff. I'll have to put these... Okay, okay, we're good. I just want to make sure that I collected all of the Alpha Yeti fur uh, from the boss. I'm not actually seeing any Alpha Yeti fur in my inventory. Did I toss it? Did I not pick it up? Uh, I mean, did I put it into the Applied Energistic system? Uh, I know we had some in there previously. I might have put it in there without looking. Alpha. So we have 19 Alpha Yeti fur. Okay, so we have a few mob swabs. I think that should be enough. So the next thing that I need to do is uh, put that with a bucket of XP and a seed, and then we can get the genetically modified chicken feed, I believe is what it's called, and then feed that to a chicken to get the spawn egg. So that's my next task. I'll be right back. All right, so we got a few of these GM chicken feeds. We just got to right click it on the chicken. <laughs> I guess that got fixed. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, when we were in here before in the Twilight Forest, before at least this update, 
every time there would be a sound, it seemed like it would always get cut off, but it doesn't seem like that happens anymore. Okay. Well, I need to find a few more chickens. I see there's one, like, right over here on the mini-map, so we'll trade this one. Oh, I guess that sound got cut off. Okay. I guess that it's not quite fixed. We just got lucky in the other sound that played. Anyway, I'm just going to go find some more chickens, feed them the, uh, the chicken feed, and then we should be able to use our spawn alpha yetis. If we don't have enough, I might just make a spawner out of it, but I'd prefer not to, <laughs> just it's faster. Anyway, I'm going to find some more chickens. We'll be back, guys. All right, so I figure we'll fight this guy here at our base. Now, I know it does destroy some blocks, and it does throw some ice around. I'm not sure how destructive it is, but I don't think it's really going to do anything over here. We don't really have anything above us, and it's just, I don't know, just concrete around. So I think we should be okay. Let's spawn one in and see how it goes. We're just going to kill him. Oh, he already picked me up. <laughs> Okay, so I can shoot him with my bow and arrow while he's in uh, rage mode. Okay, so he does throw snow around. Aha. Uh -huh. Not sure if that's bad or not. He didn't seem to destroy any blocks, though. And we got only six alpha yeti fur. Okay, so if we do yeti armor, we need a whole lot of it. I think this is nearly a stack for all the different pieces. Uh, going by my previous experience making everything else. Maybe it's closer to like 48. I, I don't know the exact number, but it's quite a bit anyway. Uh, well, we have five more spawn alpha yetis. If I don't get enough by the fourth next, by four more spawns, then we'll probably use this one just to make a new spawn, uh, a new spawner out of it and get them that way. But anyway, I'm going to spawn these in, kill them, and we'll be back, guys. All right, so after killing the Alpha Yeti uh, all those times, except for one, we ended up with 63 Alpha Yeti fur, including the uh, Alpha Yeti fur that we had from the originally killing the Alpha Yeti. Anyway, I think that's enough. Uh, so we can grab the armor off this armor stand. It's weird how this helmet is kind of like looking off in that direction, but normal armor kind of just looks off normally where you think it would should be going. I don't know. I think that's kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> I guess that armor is just kind of weird altogether with the uh, the horns on it. But let's do this. So if we do nightly helm, oh, is it because it's? I thought it would be able to use as inventory. I guess it won't do that. Okay, so there is a yeti horned helmet and the chest plate and the pants and the feet. Awesome, and we had twelve left over. So I guess it's not quite forty eight or how. No, how much did we had? We had something like 63, right? So that would be 51 pieces, I guess, is what you need in order to do this armor. Okay, well, now we know. So there is the Yeti set. What does that look like, I wonder? <laughs> Interesting looking armor. What's this enchanted with? Chills Attackers Protection 2. Feather Falling 4. Oh, that's kind of nice. Although it's pretty expensive, at least in this pack, in order to do anything with it. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to stick with this armor for now, as far as our main armor goes. And then we will claim the RAK for that. And then the next one are Abyssal Knight armors. Abyssal Knight, and that comes from what? Uh, we need a bunch of Abyssal Knight ingots. Do we have that? Uh, yes. Yes, we do. Okay. I wasn't actually sure if we had that or not, but apparently we do. So let's just go ahead and grab that armor back and we will just upgrade. So the Abyssal Knight helmet, the chest plate, leggings, and the feet, the boots. Awesome. Okay. So this armor, let's take a look at that as well. Uh, or actually, put that here and we'll put it on. Okay, so that's what that armor looks like. Cool. So after the Abyssal Knight, we'll claim this, the next one is the Dreaded Abyssal Knight armor. Now, we've actually gotten some of these pieces already. Uh, looks like we have to do a Dreadlands enchantment. So we have to do this in the Dreadlands. 
And that requires the Dreadlands Necronomicon, which I think we've already made, but it also requires a Dreadlands Altar to be made. Okay. Uh, so Dreaded Shard of Abyssal Knight, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna need 28 Dreaded Shards. Hey, we got enough. 28 of those. And then the armor, obviously. And then we also need, what was that thing? Let me go back into here. Dreadlands Essence. I'm not sure we have any of that. That's with the Staff of Rending. Once you get whatever the energy is, the Dreadlands energy, I guess. Do we have that actually? Dreadlands Essence? We have one. Yeah, so we have the Dreaded Abyssal Knight armor already. So we have two different pieces. Now, I wonder if we can put mending on them, repair them all the way up, and then that is considered good. Oh, actually, it even says that we have them completed already without even doing anything. Interesting. Yeah, uh, but in order to upgrade that to the next piece, right, we're going to need <laughs> properly repaired armor, I think. So if we look at the uses for that, yeah, that goes with refined corallium for the next armor. Uh, and I think it has to be fully repaired, and I'm not sure, like, if NBT data, like, if we enchanted and unenchanted will affect it. Anyway, long story short, I think we're just going to go ahead and craft this armor normally. So, in order to do that, we need to go to the Dreadlands and set up this altar and get the essence using our Staff of Rending. So that's going to be the next thing I'm going to work on is just using that Staff of Rending in that essence, since that's going to be kind of a bunch of off-camera work, I think. Also, we might be able uh, to upgrade this to the next one. Now, we had multi-rend on our current one. Let's see, yeah, this is done on the Dreadlands. We have multi-rend on our current wand. I might want to get that enchantment off, then we upgrade it and put that enchantment back on. I'm not sure if we just upgrade it, if it keeps it. I don't think it does. Um, anyway, I'm going to do some stuff off camera. We'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so we are in the Dreadlands, and I just placed down some Dreadstone cobblestone in the correct shape that we are supposed to be doing for the next Altar. We did this in the Abyssal Wasteland and we did this in the Overworld, so now we get to do this in the Dreadlands. Okay, so now we have that done. In order to make the Dreadlands Staff of Rending, we need to have three Dread Fragments, three Dreadstone, and a Shadow Gem, plus our Abyssal Wasteland Staff of Rending in the center. I used our... Um... What's it called? The Atomic Reconstructor, the Actual Editions laser thing, in order to remove the enchantment from our Staff of Rending. Uh, so yeah, we should be pretty much good to go here. Place that here, and then one Shadow Gem, like so, and then I think we do a shift click on the altar, and that should drain 2,000 PE from our book. 400, 200, and there it goes. Ooh. A little bit of damage, it's fine, it's fine. And upgraded Dreadland Staff of Rending. Oh yeah. So I see it contains the same energy and that we had before. So I wonder if it would have kept the multi-rend enchantment. I decided to take it off just to be double sure because I didn't want to lose it. But uh, yeah, our next step is to go reapply that to the red, yeah, the Staff of Rending to get some more of these Dreadlands Essence. So that's my next task. We'll be back. So getting the Essence is pretty easy. If you guys don't remember, all you gotta do is just point at pretty much any of the, uh, the monsters in this dimension that are red in color and just right click it. And since we have multi-rend, if we get next to some of them, like a group of them, it'll do multiple at once, which is kind of nice. So, so far we have collected six Dreadlands Essence. Yeah, we're getting it quite quickly. So we have 72 Dreadland Energy. If I right click on something, of course there's no monsters around when I wanted to uh, see what this does. So yeah, here's one. So I do one right click. We went from 72 to 75. So we get three per every damage we apply. And if there's multiple around, it does it that many more times. So we get a bunch over here. So if I do this, we should be able to get a bunch of it really quickly, which is kind of nice. Okay, so we're up to seven of those. Well, anyway, I don't really think we need that many. Uh, we can go back to our enchanting area over here. Our portal to get into the Dreadlands is right down here. I just went up to the highest point, 
and it did like a little cobblestone structure like we did in the Abyssal Wasteland. Okay, so now that we have uh, the Dreadlands Essence, we want to make the Abyssal Knight Armor. Um, right? Isn't that? I can't remember. Uh, we needed to do... Ah, we needed for this. To turn into the Dreaded Abyssal Knight. Okay, so we need 500 PE per armor, I think, right? Yeah, it's just 500, so that's easy enough. We need our Dreadlands Necronomicon, which we have, and this has to be done in the Dreadlands. So then it's a Dread Shard of Abyssal Knight plus the Essence. So that should be pretty simple to do. So we just place one of those plus seven of these around. Oh, and I guess we also need the armor, which I didn't bring with me. Be right back. Maha, so now we have the helmet here, and then we can take our Dreadlands Necronomicon, do a shift right click on there, right click, shift right click. Uh oh, did I mess something up here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus a uh, Dreadlands Essence. Let me take a look at this recipe one more time. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a Dreadlands Essence. Location the Dreadlands. We have the Dreadlands Necronomicon. Uh, why you no work then? I had to do a shift right click, but I did this before. This is not working and I am very confused why. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Uh, we're in the Dreadlands. We have the PE required Abyssal Knight helmets. Mm, okay, I'm gonna play around with this off camera and see what I can figure out here. Well, it appears this armor is now crafting. I'm not sure really what was going on here. Uh, I went back to the overworld and I put my Abyssal, no or I guess my Dreadlands Necronomicon back on the podium and charged it all the way up to 20,000. It was at 18, uh, 18,000 before and it wasn't working. I don't know if it was me charging it up or if I needed like a minimum in there or what's going on, but it seems to be crafting now. It might be that I left the dimension and came back. That could also be something else that's going on with this. I mean, I'm not doing anything different than I did before. It just was not crafting before, which is weird, but it is now. So that's all that really matters. So we just need one more of these things to be made here. So we'll place that there and do... Something like that, and there's the last one. I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just leaving the dimension and coming back or something is all that I needed to do. Yeah, I, I don't really know if, like, charging up the Necronomicon had any effect on that. Because if you go into the recipe for this, it doesn't really show the Necronomicon needs any, like, minimum in it or whatever. None of these say that, so maybe that has nothing to do with it. Anyway... So we have the Dreaded Abyssal Knight armor now, so we can claim the R-A-K for that one. And then it's into Refine Corallium. Now I do believe we have a decent amount of this. Let's take a look, Refined. Oh, we don't have as much as I thought we might. Okay, so Refine Corallium, what is the recipe for these? You can do it in the transmutation. I think there's a way you can just smelt it directly. Uh, chunk of Corallium, the liquefied Corallium ore. So we might go and try and find some more of that. I think that was like the easiest way. Otherwise, it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, I think I'll go find some more Corallium ore. Uh, we do have some gem clusters. Man, there is so much noise going on below me. Goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to go try and farm up some more of the liquefied Corallium ore so we can smelt that up. And <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so we have 49 refined Corallium. I'm not sure if that's actually enough. I know we just did the count a little bit ago on how much we needed, so we might be a little short enough so we can make more. Not a big issue. Yeah, we're missing two. Okay, so in order to make more of this refined Corallium, let's do recipe this. We needed a chunk of Corallium, which I'm pretty sure we can craft up. Uh, let's do two of them. Okay, so we will cook those. And re, whoop, refine Corallium. There's four more. All right, so we should have enough to do this now, which is fantastic. And there's the refined Corallium boots with two refined Corallium left over. All right, another quest complete, which is fantastic. Awesome. 
All right, so the next one is Dreadium Armor. I'm not sure if we can craft this yet. Dreadium Ingots, what does that cost? Oh, you know what? I, was there uh, essence for the others? I didn't even look at that. That's a tier five. That's a little expensive. Uh, uses on this, refined Corallium. Was there? No, okay. So there is no mystical agriculture for anything besides these, apparently. Uh, so to get these ingots, we need a uh, dreadium dust. We need to transmute crystallized dreadium. Interesting. Is there any other ways to get this? Block of dreadium. No. Okay. So it looks like we do have to use our transmutator and take uh, the dreaded shard of abyssal knight and turn them into that. So how many dreaded shards do I have? I have eight. That is not a lot. I know we farmed these up a little bit ago. Actually, didn't the dreaded chunk of Abyssal Knight turn into that or something? Uh, dreaded Shard of Abyssal Knight. I wonder if I can destroy our other dreaded armor that we have that's like partially damaged and get these back. Hmm. Anyway. Well, we know for sure this is how to do it. I'm just going to go farm up a bunch of the dreaded shards of Abyssal Knight. We've done that before. I'll be right back, guys. You know, on second thought, I think we might hold off on doing this armor today. I think what we're going to do is look at upgrading our sword to the next level. Yeah, the pack was updated, like I said, and this quest was fixed. So instead of having an item placeholder now, it is now 64 shards of Oblivion, and that would get us looting... 20 which would be really really nice for farming what we're about to farm like we already have looting six right and looting six is good but looting 20 is more than three times better right <laughs> so i definitely want to do that um so the dreaded shard of oblivion actually hold on a second before we do that i want to show you guys this armor real quick so this armor does give you water breathing speed and resistance so that's actually not so bad of armor. Having that resistance all the time is pretty cool. And then I guess the uh, the movement speed and all of that. But anyway, we're not going to be using that armor. We're just going to be using it to upgrade to the next armor. Uh, so, Shard of Oblivion. We need to make 64 of these. Which means we need to have a bunch of these transmutation gems. Uh, these have a limited lifespan. You can only craft with them so many times. So, uh, what was it called? <laughs> I just lost it. Oh boy, what am I even doing right now? Shard of Oblivion, Transmutation Gem, this thing. Okay, so Transmutation Gem. Yeah, you can only do 10 things. So we need at least 7 fully done ones, or I guess 6 fully done ones with some of these partial ones, in order to make all of the pieces that we need. So that's going to be a lot of crafting. So we can do Stable Unstable Ingots, which is... Uh, iron nugget stick and then a diamond and then you can craft that into the stable unstable ingot which won't blow up in your face or you can do it this method and chance like uh dying to these things i think we're gonna do this i'm pretty sure we have enough diamonds yeah we have ninety four thousand diamonds i think we're good on the whole diamond situation that we can do the stable unstable so stable uh stable ingot comes from this recipe which is a normal crafting recipe like so and then we want to do that as well cool so we need uh, 128 of those i do believe for 64 of those shards it does cost two per uh so stable 128 so that is a thousand 152 diamonds, which is fine. Like we have all of the diamonds. That's not a big deal at all. I will do that all day long just so we can craft these without worry. Okay. So now that we have that, we are going to need these guys. So I'll just go ahead and craft these up. We've done this before a while ago. We have all of this stuff. So let me go ahead and get these going and we'll be back. So after crafting all of these different transmutation gems and then pulling a couple of the extra ones out of my inventory here. I feel like I might've made a mistake. I feel like this recipe probably isn't going to use any durability off of this and we'll get this item back. <laughs> I didn't try this yet. I probably should have, but anyway, if that's the case, we have extra transmutation gems. 
Uh, so transmutation. I just want to make sure it doesn't use the entire one because we might need 64 of these as well. If I do that. Okay, so it does use the durability off of that. So I didn't make too many. So let's just make as many of these as we can. So there's 64. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so we had everything in the system ready to do that. So short of oblivion, done. So going back to the quest, we need a star. Star is done. We need 500 RAK. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. That is more than enough. It should be 36 per to make a hundred. Like so. I haven't even seen how much RAK we have remaining. How much is that? 1437. Okay. Well, I mean, this is pretty much everything we need except for the blizz rods. Now, blizz rods, we can make blizz essence, which is a tier three. And in order to do that, we need blizz chunks. And blizz chunks come from frost rods plus a tier three mob, ch uh, mob chunk. So we have experience chunk. Okay, we have seven skeleton chunks, so we can smelt those down. So we need four of those, and then a uh, frost rod or blizz rod. Okay, we got those too. Did we already do this before? Now I can't remember. Before I go and craft these seeds, have we already made uh, blizz seeds? I'm not actually sure that we have. I guess it'd probably be best to go into the quest book here into the seed section look at the tier three intermedium and just kind of make sure that we have not done it yeah blizz seeds we have not crafted those yet <laughs> just it'd be silly for me to do that and then find out later oops we never even did those anyway so we can smelt those chunks down and uh, here we are the tier three mob chunk i guess we need to craft it here so that plus those there is blizz chunks four of them Okay, so we have that, and we need a frozen core. Uh, frozen core, yeah, we got plenty of frozen cores. And intermediate. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this, 10, 10, 10 these, and then we will be right back. Aha, well, bl our blizz rods are no longer an issue. We can go ahead and turn this off now. Sweet. Okay, so we have all of the Blizz Essence, put all that stuff away. Whoops, too many. Blizz Essence. So now we can do this and that and one of these and one of those and some of this and some of that. Okay, that should be more than enough that we need for our next quest. Cool. So let's go ahead and claim the reward from this one. Or I guess I've also done Obsidian Seeds as well. We we're running low on Obsidian. Uh, what else do we got here? We want to do under Rewards, under this one. And it does require the previous sword. So we are going to lose that. So we'll detect submit. And it looks like we have everything ready to go. So I'm going to claim our new sword. So now we have looting 20, reaper 4, auto smelt because we need auto smelt. Uh, knockback, which I'm not a huge fan of, but eh, whatever. Um... How much damage does this do? It says 51 hearts on it, right? So we have plus 10 max health, 100% attack speed, plus 50 attack damage, 5 knockback resistance, and plus 3 reach distance. So this thing is crazy good. <laughs> so plus 3 reach distance, that means I can target blocks that far away? That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I think you can use that to your advantage too. Like if you put a pick in your offhand or something, I think, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe if we do it this way, mm, no, doesn't seem to work that way. There was something I remember being able to do. Maybe it's if you use the watering can, not that that's like super useful to use that at range, but I think maybe that's what it was. Do I have a watering can? This one, can I put that in my offhand. Yeah, I can water can at distance. <laughs> I guess that's useful, maybe. Anyway, uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, we have the new sword. I'm curious, though, what the uh, the next one entails. That requires 1,000 RAK, 200 Blizz Rods, a Soul Crystal. Well, we can get that anytime. And then a Gaia Spirit Ingot. So we have to fight the Guardian of Gaia in order to do that. 
And this is going to give us looting 50, Reaper 50, Auto Smelt 50, Knockback 5, 500% uh, attack speed, 200 attack damage, 20 max health, 10 reach distance. Dude, this thing is crazy. And that's not even its final form because there is one after that. So the one that we are currently using is 50 attack damage, so I should be able to pretty much one-shot any regular monster around, which is going to be great. Um, yeah, now we have all of this extra blizz rods and stuff like that for a leader. Oh, I should probably get rid of the essence and just turn it all into blizz rods. Man, that stuff crafts so slowly in the, in the wireless crafting. That kind of stinks. Anyway... Uh, so I think we're going to go ahead and call it here for today, guys. It's not my care real quick. Yeah, so we got ourselves our new sword. When we go and farm up the uh, the dreaded shards of Abyssal or whatever those are, we should be able to loot them with 20 looting, and that'll make us so we have to kill three or four times less mobs than what we normally would have to. So that's really, really good. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.